Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and as you probably already know, Apple held an event this week, their usual September event, where they only announced two things, not an iPhone and not an iPhone. So once we collectively got over that, you know, it will be a dedicated iPhone 12 event, likely sometime in October. But what we did see at this one was new Apple Watches and new iPads. Now it's September, so we're gonna get to it all eventually. But what I do have here for you is a first look at Apple Watch Series 6, and also we'll touch briefly on the new Apple Watch SE. So this is everything that's new, and lucky for us, it's pretty simple. Now the new stuff actually starts with the unboxing, where you're gonna get mostly the same packaging as a previous generation Apple Watch, but this time you'll notice, besides the watch itself and the band it comes with, half the charger is missing. So it comes with the cable that you need, but no USB wall adapter. And that's now sold separately. And Apple notably tacked that into the environmental section of their presentation, kind of like I predicted in my video about how the iPhone 12 will probably also not come with a wall adapter to save money, I mean, to save the environment uh, from all the e-waste caused by them. Consider this lack of a brick in the box, basically writing on the wall for the next iPhone. Anyway, then you get to the watch itself. <laughs> and aesthetically, on the outside, the only real change that you will notice is the colors, and that's because that's the only real change on the outside. The materials are the same, the sizes available are the same, but you do have some new colors now. There's blue, gold, graphite, and yes, this product red that we have here. Now, I personally still like to do my accent colors with the band more than the watch itself. I've always had a black Apple watch, and like, I don't think I'd want a red Apple Watch all the time, like every single day, but hey, maybe you can rock that. Maybe you can make that choice if you want to. Some people could, I could see wearing the blue like every day. It's not so bad, but it looks familiar. New color, that's simple. And then on the inside, really the tech improvements are the new S6 chip and a couple new sensors. So the S6 chip, really feels like Apple Silicon team continuing to make strides, flexing on us again. They've always been really good with efficiency and they've made another step in that direction here. So it is a dual core chip in here based on the A13 Bionic and thanks to its improved efficiency, it'll let them crank up the always on display to be twice as bright as the Series 5 and keep the same battery and performance. And now I've been messing around with this for just a couple hours on watchOS 7, and I do think they've tightened up a lot of the animations, so it actually feels faster, snappier, because the animations are shorter. But really, I think that was the goal, is to keep the battery life at a day and a half, because that's important, that's what it's been for so long, and now the watch does sleep tracking, so people really need to find the right sliver of time in the morning to charge it up and not have it die. And the Series 6 watch will actually now charge up faster as well, so it'll go from zero to 100% battery in about an hour and a half, which is, it's not blazing fast or anything, but it is an improvement, it's better than no improvement at all. And of course, most things charge their fastest from zero to like 75%, so that'll be shorter. So then, those new sensors I mentioned, which you can kind of see if you're looking at the bottom of the watch or if you fire it up and start to do a new measurement, and that's because there is a new blood oxygen sensor. So it's literally using infrared photography to measure the color and therefore the percentage of oxygen in your blood it's pretty wild, I gave it a shot. I consistently get a pretty normal reading, which I guess is a good sign. Now, of course, the stipulation is it's not medical grade. It's just kind of there to inform you generally of where you're at. Like you probably by yourself won't think this is a reason to get the Apple Watch Series 6, but it's here and it's cool that it works. And then there's some other quick hits, five gigahertz Wi-Fi support now in Series 6. There's also now an altimeter using barometric air pressure to tell you your elevation down to the foot which means it won't work on planes, but whatever. Could be cool for hiking or skydiving or David Blaine. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Series 6. Not that dramatic of a difference, but whenever you see new colors on Apple products, people tend to go pretty into it with the color stuff, and I can see people making a pretty big deal about that. So some of the bigger Apple Watch changes that I've just kind of been wondering about lately, like when are they gonna do a different shape, like maybe a more round version? When are they potentially going to add Qi wireless charging support? Are they ever gonna do that to enable more compatibility with other smart wireless charging pads or maybe a future version of AirPower? Are they ever gonna do truly open third-party watch faces and have a whole watch face store? None of that big dramatic stuff is happening 
with Series 6. Now I do like that watchOS 7 keeps slowly adding a few more watch faces and there's some more cool ones here, again with third-party plugins via complications, the way it's always been. But again, this isn't like dramatically changing anything. You still have most of the customization you'd be used to for an Apple Watch refresh. But maybe more interesting than the watch itself actually is these new bands they announced. So these, these, uh, these are some stretchy, they call them solo loop bands. And essentially they're the really clean, minimal, seamless bands that they've announced alongside the Series 6 watch. And so basically, as you can imagine, fitting is really important with these. So to get the right one, they have a fitting document on their site you can print out, use a credit card to make sure you printed the right size. Then you cut out this loop and use this to wrap it around your wrist to figure out your Apple Watch size. And then you can go in and order your solo loop band in that size. And if all goes well, then you can attach both ends to the watch and you can put it on just by stretching it over your wrist every time instead of having to do all the hard work of opening and closing a Velcro or a buckle. I would say just from my experience, if you're, if you're between sizes, I would say go for the more snug one because it'll be a little tighter at first and then you can break it in and eventually get it your size instead of one that's too big and then just always a little bit too big. But those bands are gonna be 50 to 100 bucks. The braided ones here are 100 bucks, so I probably wouldn't recommend getting these, but the $50 just clean ones that are stretchy and clean, I just like stretching them, uh, pretty minimal. And the Apple Watch Series 6 price is staying the same. But speaking of prices, I also should touch on, there is a new Apple Watch SE, and that's starting at 279, which is pretty sweet. And as you can probably imagine, just based on the name, the Apple Watch SE is the new, old, new Apple Watch. That makes sense, right? But we've seen this formula before. Basically, the Apple Watch SE is an Apple Watch Series 5, more or less. There's no blood oxygen sensor. There's no electrocardiogram. There's no always on display. But for a lot of people who don't need most of those things, this is a great deal for a watch. It's much faster than the Series 3. It has the bigger screen sizes from the new models and it even gets an always-on altimeter. So that's a lot of smartwatch for 279. I can see this being one of the more popular upgrades or even a gift, I think, for people this holiday season, which is probably a big reason Apple's deciding to drop it now. But there it is. That's pretty much everything you need to know that's different about this Apple Watch versus the others. There's of course the watchOS stuff coming to all Apple Watches. There's of course the family sharing stuff, which is kind of interesting low key, also appearing across Apple Watches. But hey, if you didn't already like Apple Watch, this won't change your mind. If you already loved Apple Watch, this won't change your mind. You're still gonna love it. To me, I'm still in that mode where I'm thinking about the more nebulous big picture thoughts. When are they gonna make a circle? That type of thing. But either way, let me know what you think. If this is the Apple Watch for you, and uh, that's pretty much it. Tech Timber is just gonna keep rolling. Thanks for watching this one. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.